Okay, so this is going to be a really short video. I'm just going to show you how to take a vectorized design and turn it into the file you would need to cut a silicone mold. And you might be hearing a very raspy noise. That's a purring cat. I'm not moving them. Sorry. So <laughs> let's get started. So for this design, I drew up this moth um, and I have three different versions. So I have a little offset here, and then I have different holes. So I imagine in this one, maybe it's a keychain. In this, it could be a necklace. And this, I have no idea. It would just be a moth. I don't know what you would do with it. So let's start with our actual drawing. And I'm gonna paste it to the side, and I'm gonna show you how to get to the, the layered mold parts and figure that out. So once you have your design, just make sure it's all one piece, it's grouped together, however you want to group it. I generally will fuse it with the Pathfinder using the Unite option, and that's already done here. And then the next step I need to do is create the offset. So with a resin mold, you're, you're not going to have like your engraving necessarily go all the way to the edge. I imagine you could potentially do that. I haven't tried that. I don't know really how the mold would work. I've only ever seen them with like a little bit of an offset. So that's what we're going to do. I will show you how to do it both ways though, because you, there may be an application in which you don't want an offset. So let's grab this over here. And first, let me show you how to make the offset. And then I'll show you how to make a flush edge instead. So I'm going to grab my object. I'm going to go to object path, offset path. And what it's going to do is it's going to make a ton of paths everywhere. There's an object. It's going to expand it a little bit, but we're going to make that work. Um, you'll notice I have some little pointy bits. I'm going to hit this and change it to round. And a lot of times that will eliminate them. And then I just need to create the thickness of the offset. So let's try point one. I have preview checked. I'm going to click. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's say that we're happy with that. And I'm going to click OK. Now, before I do anything else, you can see there's a lot of little paths selected. I'm not going to click anywhere except Unite. And that will fuse all of my little pieces into a shape. But you'll notice it's not perfect. There's a couple little open areas. So let's fix those really quick. I'm actually going to move it to the side. Looks like we're grouped, so I'm going to right mouse click and hit Ungroup. I'm going to move that to the side, and I'm going to take a look at it a little closer. And there's a couple things I want to do here. It's a little bumpy, which I don't like the look of, and I have some holes. So one of the ways to remove the holes, if you only have one or two, is to take your direct selection tool, which is your white arrow, find your holes and click on one of the nodes, and just hit delete until it goes away. It'll delete it in like chunks. So delete, 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 and it's gone. That's one way, or I'm gonna undo it. I'm gonna show you one other way. The other option, is to find your blob brush, which is behind your paintbrush tool. So I'm clicking and holding, selecting the blob brush, and you can see it's gigantic. Oh my gosh, this is gonna take forever. So, oh my gosh, I don't know why it's taking so long. Um, so let's come here, double click, um, and I'm gonna change the size that way, it's a lot faster. So I was using the bracket keys, which is usually how I raise and lower my brush size. Let's just double click on the blob brush to bring up the selections, and then I'm going to make this much smaller. I'm going to click OK. And then while I have the object selected, I can just sort of like color over the areas and that will fill them in. Now that that's done, I'm going to reselect this. I'm going to go to Object, Path, Simplify. And you can actually simplify and smooth your path out this way. That's one way to do it. I'm going to undo. The other option is to manually do it by finding, and it's under the shaper tool or the pencil tool, your smooth tool. Click your shape, and you can just run this along wherever you want to adjust it. So very, very simple. Those are two methods. It kind of reduces the amount of points, makes it easier to work with. And then I'm going to hit inverse, and you can see I have my shape. However, I forgot to ungroup it, and I accidentally deleted everything else. No big deal though, I'm just going to copy this, delete all these artifacts, and because I always keep like a copy of what I was working on somewhere in the artboard, so for example, I always keep the original art off to the side so I don't do stuff like that, I'm just going to option drag it to copy it, hit command V to paste, 
and then just reline this up shouldn't be too hard so there we go we now have our object with an offset now I'm going to show you the alternate option and here I'm just changing the color of my line art so you can see it so let's option drag our moth over here again and I'm going to show you how to get just like a perfect outline shape so I'm going to take my rectangle tool draw a rectangle and it's on top but I'm going to right mouse click hit arrange send to back you can also use shift command left bracket and that will send it back as well and now I need to go back to my pathfinder and so oh, we got a cat yelling in the background too so always nice um, grab both items and then you're going to hit the divide function and it looks kind of like nothing really happened but you'll notice what it did is it sliced everything apart so I'm going to take my direct selection tool I'm just going to delete this outer piece and basically every object inside of here is now filled so what I could choose to do at this point is I can actually use this to color my illustration if I want. I've shown this in other tutorials, but you can use this to color your illustration and do some kind of cool stuff. Or in my case, I'm just going to fuse everything together. So let's grab this guy, fuse it all, and now you have essentially a perfect outline right up to the edge of your shape. In this case, I probably would still hand paint this in because your laser is never going to be able to cut these little details. It's just going to basically set the product on fire, I promise you. <laughs> so I'd probably take my pen tool and hand draw like a shape around these just so I could save myself trying to blow up my machine because I just know the laser can't do um, an area like that. And I have other videos where I talk kind of about the pen tool and some of those illustration techniques. So you may recognize some of these. And then from here, I'm just going to fuse that together as well. And I can actually clean that up with the blob brush, which is probably, if I was spending a little bit more time, I might do that. So I got a lot of points here. I still don't want the laser to have to cover over all those edges. So let's just do it like that. And I'm just using a trackpad right now, by the way. So I'm not using like a Wacom or any special equipment to draw this. Just cleaning that up with a blob brush. And there you go. And now I can set that to outlines. Same thing, copy and paste this piece and get them back lined up. Let's change the color here to, looks like I have a fill like that. Let's turn off that fill and line those up. It looks like I have a little piece there, I've got it correct, but that gives you the basic idea. Now the next step, after we've created our offset or non-offset or whatever we're doing here, is we need to create the parts for the mold. And all of this is, is just a repeat of this offset path function. So we're going to take this one, claiming that's my completed one. If I wanted to add a hole, I can use that same combination of um, tools here. So I can draw a circle. And I'm going to hit copy, command shift V to paste in place, shift option to scale down. I'm going to fuse the outer hole with that piece. And then just you can just keep these grouped, or I'm going to hit minus front so it actually divides it. So, okay, so let's say this is our design. We're going to do a keychain and we're going to use um, a nice large hole like this. From here, simply take your outline shape, go to object, path, offset path, and give it a little bit more space. I think you generally want like 0.25, you know, a quarter of an inch of space around your mold so you have strong walls for your silicone. So we do that, and then we just have to do that one more time. Object, path, offset path another quarter inch here and now I want to color these two a different color so I can remember that they're a different function and here we can see so this is essentially the main part of your mold you have your actual object that you're going to engrave and cut out and then you have this offset wall here 
So you're going to leave it grouped like this. You're going to throw out this piece right here, and you're going to see that when you see the other parts in my tutorial. But you're going to basically have this outer ring, your actual piece, and then the one other item you need is to take the largest outermost piece, copy and paste that, and that's your backer. So when cutting this in the Glowforge interface, I use whatever scrap of 1 8 acrylic material for this. I'm going to cut this piece. I'm going to copy and paste that and move that to the side as well. I'm going to cut two of these. So one, and then I'm going to leave this stuff all nested, and that will be number two. This item, I cut mine for one of my molds out of quarter inch. I wanted it really nice and thick. But you could always, of course, move this and cut that separately from a thinner material if you wanted one eighth or something like that. The key is that you need at least two of these, one the thickness of the material and then one higher so that you have some depth to your mold and it can flow over top. So those are essentially the four pieces you need from your mold. And those are and that's the, the basic repertoire of techniques you would need to create it. So to recap, you have your drawing. You're going to use your offset path function to create the outline, fuse it together, clean it up, add any holes, things like that. And then you're just going to use your offset path function two more times on the outermost shape so that you have the walls for your mold and the backer piece. And that's it.